way through the movement. And then you're going to have a big restatement of the first four measures, and then you see, um, you know, fortissimo, the strings come in, the, the entire orchestra. And it's even more intense now in the second half as far as just the emotional uh, things. So you see some writing here where Brahms uh, has kind of tremolo passages in the strings that are variation 17. And he's going to go through the same process of animating the rhythm again. And so um, that is um, in dotted quarter notes. And then you're going to have eighth notes presented in variation 18. Then turn over to the next one. You have some antiphonal writing. So what did antiphonal mean again? So it's antiphonal alternating between two bodies of instruments, so they're at variation 19. You hear the brass and the strings against being answered by, by the winds. Um, you then have some triplet eighth notes, so again, it's, this, it's building momentum, variation 21, then it has descending scales and 32nd notes. And you have some syncopated um, variation uh, 22 has um, harmony that's sounding on the offbeat in the winds against um, triplets. So you have that three against two and offbeat and, and so forth. So um, the, the end of the set, variation 29, there on page 159 has a whole variation that's uh, basically in the yellow, that's the shift in the duple. And variation 30 has an extra four measures, and then where the tempo changes, that's a coda at the end. So it's really very tightly constructed, tight net. So every eight measures is a new variation. So let's go back to the uh, Middle there, variation 16 with a restatement of the theme.
Just because a composer like Brahms doesn't use more exotic sounds doesn't mean that the music isn't emotional. So the music is extremely dramatic, and, and that's what romantic music is all about. It's just that personal expression of deep emotional feelings and trying to connect with the listener in a, a very intense way. All right, um, pass those scores across. So what we're going to do. Um, next is to do a practice listening. So why don't you pull out your theme sheets, if you have those, and go over again what to prepare for this test. date of composition. So it's plus or minus 10 years on that date. That's worth one point. And then the form of the particular movement, whether it's Sonata Allegro or uh, the Brahms theme of variation. So that's also worth one point. So the themes that are on your theme sheet are the ones that she will hear. And so you need to have those identify, you know, associated with each particular movement. So, let's just go over um, quickly the, the, the works and, and the dates. So you can just make a list of these. If you've got your syllabus, you can write it on your syllabus. Um, but the first work that we talked about was the Mozart Proxy theme. And the dates of Mozart's life are 1756 to 1791. And this particular symphony was composed in 1787. And the first movement and the second movement are on your list, your listening list. Both of those movements are in Sonata Allegro form. So the form of those is Sonata Allegro. 
And then the second one we looked at was the Haydn Symphony Number no. 104. That also, like the Prague Symphony, is in the key of D major. That one is nicknamed the London Symphony. The dates of Haydn's life are 1732 to 1809. This symphony was composed in 1795. And the form of the first movement, which is the only movement on your list, is Sonata Electro form. Then the third work, yes? Um, if we wrote down either the London Symphony or the Four, four would we get? You get full credit. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, you just need to have something that's going to distinguish it from the other symphonies that that composer wrote. All right, then the third work we did was the Beethoven Symphony Number no. 5. It's in the key of C minor. And the dates of Beethoven's life are 1770 to 1827. And this work was written during a like, four-year period, so 1804, 1807. It was premiered in 1808 in Vienna. And it's a four-movement work, and the first, third, and fourth movements are on your list to identify. So the first movement is in Sonata Allegro form. The third movement is scherzo trio form. And the fourth movement is sonata allegro form. And then the fourth work that we looked at was the Berlioz Symphony Fantastique. The dates of Berlioz's life are 1803 to 1869. This work was premiered in 1830. It is a five movement work and the most famous example of a programmatic symphony. First movement is in sonata allegro form, but it's an unusual treatment as compared to the Viennese classical approach to the form. But nonetheless, sonata allegro form. And the last movement doesn't follow a classical form. The last movement is following the program. So you could just put that. Just, you know, doesn't follow classical form. It follows the program. So first and fifth movements are on the listening list. And then the last work is the one we just did, Brahms symphony number four. So dates of Brahms' life are 1833 to 1897. So just think, he's a third of the three Bs, Bach, Beethoven, Brahms. So 33 to 97. And this fourth symphony, which was the last symphony that he wrote, was completed in 1885. And we are just listen to the last movement of that, fourth movement, and theme and variations it is the form. Okay, so you can see most of the forms that we looked at were Sonata Allegro form. So, if you have to guess, it's going to be the best guess probably, according to the odds. From Beethoven to Symphony Number 5, we just put premiere in the Say it again, but 18 of what? For Beethoven to be number five, uh -huh. can you just put premiere in 1808? Yeah, absolutely. So all I'm looking for is just, yeah, when it's premiered and then plus or minus 10 years on that. So you've got to be pretty close. All right, so um, I'll give you now a chance to listen.
course, you won't be able to use your theme sheets, but. <laughs> Okay. 